opened up these guys. Please be seated. Thank you, Brother Daniel Liu, for the lovely songs. All songs, religious songs, are very soothing to the mind. It has this calming effect, I suppose because of the words. Thank you very much. If we have more time, we would love you to sing more. Thank you. Okay, um, may I just um, briefly walk you through tonight's program. Immediately after this, the uh, VP, the Vice President of Singapore Buddhist Mission, Brother Liu, will address you. Uh, following this will be the talk and the Q&A sessions, and then we'll wrap up the night's um, program with blessings from the Mahasanka. Okay, um, Brother Liu, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kima. A very good evening, venerable sirs and friends in the town. This evening, on behalf of Singapore Buddhist Mission, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. And thank you for being with us. Singapore Buddhist Mission was established in 1982 with the objectives to spread the sublime teachings of the Buddha and also to promote Buddhist cultures and moral values. For information about SBM, please feel free to visit our website at www.ihipasiko-spa.org. Tonight's public talk is in line with our objectives and we are very grateful to our Chief Religious Advisor, Venerable Dr. Keshwe Dhammananda, Maha Michael Taylor, who has kindly consented to speak on the Buddhist concept on God. Tonight is a rare opportunity for all of us to learn and benefit from the speaker, Venerable Dr. K. Sri Damananda, who is a household name in the Buddhist world. Finally, I would like to thank our resident monk, Brahma Dhamika, and all our fellow Buddhists who have contributed their time and effort to make this event a success. Thank you once again and do have a pleasant and fruitful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Leo. Now before we proceed with the talk, may I just um, give you some insight into some activities organized by SBM to the two main ones. We have two main groups to conduct activities, uh, one for the adults and uh, the other one more for the youth. We have the Dharma Discussion Group, headed by Brother So. He's over there, and uh, he's waving his hands. Okay. Um, this would be of interest.
interest to all of you because in the sessions they hold, they learn they learn how to apply the teachings of the Buddha in their daily lives and also how to solve problems uh, close to their hearts. You, uh, I think if you attend, you will emerge a happier person, more confident, and you see your problems in, well, in a, a different perspective. Okay? Now the youth group also organizes fun field activities, and um, that, the youths who join their activities um, acquire very good values that will actually help them meet the challenges in life. Um, and also, just a reminder that you all have your feedback forms, okay? Uh, please do fill it up and then uh, either you drop it at the entrance there or give it to any of the ushers there, okay? Right, um, now may I introduce you to our Venerable Sir here, the Venerable Honourable Speaker. Now, Venerable? In brief. <laughs> He is a very, very humble person. He doesn't want me to tell you all the nice things. But I, actually, I have lots and lots of nice things that I wish to tell you. But he tells me to talk so much about him. <laughs> okay, now he is a respected leader of the Buddhist community. And he's recognized for his efforts in fostering greater interfaith dialogue and understanding. And uh, as a result, he has been invited to many inter-religious seminars and conferences all over the world. Uh, he's also a prolific writer with well over 74 publications in his name, some of which were translated into different language, uh, languages by request. Okay. And uh, so we are really indeed very honoured and very, very proud that is here tonight to give his talk. Venerable Sir, Buddhist concept of God. Venerable members of the Mahasangha, dear friends, thank you very much for having invited me once again to give a religious talk here by the Singapore Buddhist Mission. Many years ago, we have formed this Singapore Buddhist Mission to teach Buddhism, but not to convert others into Buddhism. That is the main purpose of this I have been working in Malaysia for the last 51 years to promote Buddhism. But I have not converted even one man into Buddhism. What a failure. <laughs> Because very confused. 
interesting what people talk about God, Buddhist, Christian, Hindus, Muslim, free thinkers, all of them talk about God. The whole world is divided into three groups. Those who have become slaves to God, depending on God for everything. <laughs> Another group try to make use of God, <laughs> asking, expressing their grievances and problems and troubles and difficulties. They try to make use of God. And some modern intellectuals completely ignored the concept of God. To them, there is no such concept or belief in reality. There is a God in this world. Adi group. Now what is the Buddhist? Whether they have belonged to first group or second group or third group. Recently, I was invited to give a talk in International Islamic University. After my talk, one student asked, Why Buddhists do not believe in God? Yeah, who told you Buddhists do not believe in God? <laughs> you are wrong. Buddhist concept on God is different. Not like Christians, Muslims, Hindus and others. They have their own concept on God. Last January, I went to Cambodia to attend a World Buddhist Conference. Before that, Cambodian government, education department, made an announcement, appeared in the local newspaper also here. Since Cambodia is dominantly a Buddhist country. They are going to remove the word God from their textbook. I went to attend this conference. I told Cambodia, you have done a lot of damages to Buddhism. You introduced them as anti-God. <laughs> You have no right to remove this word, God. They have no right to say there is no God from the Buddhist point of view. How are we going to work with Christians, Muslims, Hindus and others who believe in God if you are anti-God? <laughs> They had to reduce their feeling. I think they reconsidered <coughs> that mistake they have done. Now let us refer to the Buddha. In his 45 years teaching, is there any place where Buddha has said there is no God? No one can find out. Buddha has never uttered such word. There is no God. Somebody came and asked this question. Have we got anything to prove the existence of God? The way how the Buddha answered in this. Have we got anything to disprove the existence of God? <laughs> uh, this is the Buddha's attitude toward God. When the Buddha
they appeared in India more than 2,500 years ago. Do you know how many gods were there in India at that time? <laughs> Thirty-three millions. The whole day and night, without working, what they were doing? Worshipping, praying, offering, chanting in the name of God. When the Buddha appeared, he explained the real concept of God, the qualities of a God, whether Gods are important or not, he pointed out. Then I think at least two millions disappeared. <laughs> God, sun is God, galaxies are God, rain is God, water is God, light is God, earth is God, food is God. That's why for everything today, even pi 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 pi. That tradition, the Buddha has pointed out, God has nothing to do with all these things. The God exists. Then. The word Brahma, you might have heard, so many thousands of years, people in India used this word Brahma because they have three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Siva, creator, protector, destroyer. So, Brahma means creator God. The Buddha did not reject this word. <coughs> In his teaching, we can point out where he has used this word, God. In Mitta when we radiate our Mitta, Again, Mangal Sutta. Brahmati Mata Pitaru. Mata Pitaru means mother and father. The Buddha never said father and mother. Mother and father. Yes, because mother is the one who suffers because of the child, not the father. So, Regard your mother and father as Brahma. What is the meaning of Brahma here? The God that existed in India. This is in the teachings of the Buddha. Therefore, how can we say the Buddha has rejected the concept of God? Again, Ratana Sutra, many of these Buddhists who recite this. Divacha Ratto Haranti Yebalim Tasmai Nerakata Appamatta. Advice given by the Buddha. Those devout religious people, day and night, perform certain religious services. After that, they remember the God and invite the gods of Deva to share the happiness that they gained. In the advice given by the Buddha to those Devas, those God, tasmai ne rakhata appamatta. Therefore, it is your duty to protect, keep an eye on 
those devotees who remember you, who invited you to share the happiness of the merits that they gave. This is the sayings of the Buddha. Again. Devatanu kampito poso sada bhadrani pasati. I am giving this quotation directly from the teachings of the Buddha for you to understand the Buddhist attitude towards God. If you try to invite the devas, to communicate the devas, devas always keep an eye on you for your protection and for you to avoid misfortune, accidents, because you get the support from the devas. Ah, this is the Buddhist attitude towards God. Now let us analyze the meaning of this word God. The followers of many religions believe that God created this world, that God protect this world, and one day, God will destroy this world. And the Buddha rejected this. World was not created by the Buddha. Modern scientists, psychologists, intellectuals, all over the world believe this world was not created by the God. Then, human beings were created by the God. Do you know? 1998, there was a very big article in the Straight Times, nearly half a page. Pope John announced Human beings were not created by the God. They come into existence due to gradual development of evolution. You can refer to state times and give the quotation. Pope John. Then, Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, Sota Fernandez. He's a very good friend of mine. Three days ago also he came to the temple to see me. As soon as he entered into my room, he said, please bless me. <laughs> yes. When I went to the church to attend some meeting, he came and blessed me. On his birthday, he invited Christians, Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, and all of them, after speaking few words, he said, may God bless you. After speaking few words, I also said, may the Buddhist God bless you. <laughs> the God to come and bless him. <laughs> this is our attitude, my dear friend. So, there is no reason for a Buddhist, according to the teachings of the Buddha, that God can send us to heaven or hell. God has no right to wash away the sins committed by us. The Buddha cannot do that. The God cannot do that. The person who has committed 
the mistake can do this. Please remember this. If you have committed certain bad, wicked, cruel thing, by praying to God, by praying to Buddha, you never get the chance to get it of the bad effects. Because they cannot do that. But you can. The Buddha has pointed out how to do that. Without depending on God, without depending on Buddha or Bodhisattvas, how you can do that? Yasa papam katam kamam kusale napitiyati. Direct saying to the Buddha. If you have committed certain bad deeds, no bad karma, by realizing that it is wrong, stop. Not to repeat, ah, then stop. From that day onward, try to cultivate more and more good karma. Then you will be able to overcome the bad effects of the bad deeds that you have committed earlier by cultivating more and more and more good karma. Kusala karma. There are two words. The Buddhists have mixed up the meaning of these two words. I think non-Buddhists cannot understand that. But the Buddhists always use this punya karma and kusala karma. Punya karma in English only one word. Meritorious deed. There is no another word. Punya karma means we do lot of good deeds by helping others, supporting others, and release their sufferings and poverty and sicknesses and all the other problems. All these are punya kam. We offer, donate so many things for the well-being of others. But by expecting something in return, you offer something to others by expecting something in return. That is called punya karma. By offering something, you aim, you aspire to be born in a rich family for you to enjoy your life. Ah, that is punya karma. By doing some meritorious deeds, you want to go to heaven and enjoy your life. That is punya karma. Because you expect some reward in return. Yes, you gain. You gain what you wanted. But after spending, one day you will go bankrupt. <laughs> that good karma, that punya karma sub cannot support you for you. There is a limited period for that. Uh, this is the nature of punya karma. But kusal karma is different. It is mentioned like this. Adoso kusalamola. Amoho kusalamola. Adoso kusalamola. How we can create kusal, kusal karma, highest good karma. When we do some good deeds to reduce our craving, to reduce our selfishness, it is kusal karma. When we do certain good deeds, to reduce your anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will and wickedness and cruelty. It is Kusala karma. When you do certain good deeds, reduce our ignorance, 
misconception, imagination, misunderstanding, it is Kusarga. Because you did not accept anything in return by doing that. But you develop your understanding, your mind, maintain some sort of development and purity in your mind. Then what will happen? In the next birth, those non-Buddhists uh, cannot accept that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> After death, in the next existence, more understanding, more good qualities, more kindness, more knowledge, more wisdom gain because of this. Uh, that is how life after life we develop up to the final goal, final salvation. Not by praying to God, not by praying to Buddha, not by praying to Bodhisattvas or any uh, supernatural living being, but by cultivating, developing, purifying our Again, I told you, it is impossible for God to wash away the sins committed by us. The Buddha also cannot do that. The Buddha says like this, Suddhi asuddhi pachyattam nanya manya visodhi The purity and impurity good karma or bad karma that remains in our mind. Another person cannot change. Another person cannot amend or destroy. That means even Buddha or God or any other living being cannot do this. But the person who has committed that can avoid the bad, bad defect. When he understood he had been committing evil, then stop. Not because of fear of God or fear of hell. By knowing that it is wrong, and then from that day onward, cultivate the good karma, life after life, life after life. Bad karma had no chance to come and effect, come and catch. Now let us take Angulimala, you might have heard his name, murderer, who killed in one thousand human beings. The Buddha approached him. The Buddha knew simply by advising he cannot change. There are some people, no one can change their mind by advice. There were two stubborn disciples of the Buddha, very arrogant, very mischievous, very jealous, related to the Buddha also. How many times the Buddha advised you? They did not accept. Uh, remember, by force, another person cannot change the mind. Either God or the Buddha. That person must admit, understand, then he or she can change. Another person cannot change the mind. So what he did? After discussing with the Buddha, he came to know that he had been doing very cruel, very wicked, very dangerous thing. Then decided to stop. After that, he asked, can I follow him? The Buddha says, why not? Then he said, can I become a monk? The murderer, 
the Buddha says, he was ordained as a monk. And from that day onward, he went on meditating, meditating, cultivating and developing and developing his mind. Finally, he attained the Arahantahu. I think many others cannot understand the meaning of this word Arahantahu. The higher stage of sainthood. After that, final salvation, Nirvana. The bad karma had no chance to catch him. Uh, that is the method taught by the Buddha, my dear friend. There's no point of praying to Buddha or God or Bodhisattvas, please forgive me, I have done. Then if they can wash away the sin today, tomorrow again you can start. <laughs> Please think your, use your common sense, irrespective of religious label. Use your common sense. You have thinking mind. You have sense of reasoning. Don't become slaves to any religion or any god or the Buddha. The Buddha has said, you should not accept anything thinking that Buddha is a great man. Therefore, we must accept what he said. No. No use. You must try to understand what the Buddha said. No personality cult. Without depending on the Buddha as a person, you should not try to understand because Buddha said this, therefore we cannot do that. Recently, I was invited to give a talk in a Catholic church. Occasionally, we invite each other. <laughs> yes, very friendly. Yesterday, I had a one-hour discussion with a Catholic bishop and in television program. It appeared next Saturday. So, after my talk, somebody asked this question. You say, the Buddha says like this. We say, Jesus says like this. Who is correct? <laughs> and I told him, you can forget your Jesus. I can forget the Buddha. Use our common sense. <laughs> The Buddha says, we should not steal. Jesus says, thou shalt not steal. Do you think without depending on Jesus, without depending on God, that we cannot understand that the stealing is bad? <laughs> Why do we have to depend on them to understand that it is wrong? They are religious teachers. They appeared in this world to remind. It is not that they have created all these things. To remind us. Because we have forgotten. We have neglected. The Buddhas appear from time to time. And some other religious teachers like Jesus, Muhammad and Krishna also appear from time to time. They remind us. These are the duties, these are the responsibilities, these are the things that you should not do, these are the things that you have to do. They have not created all these things. But there are people, when they use their common sense, they can understand these things are naturally wrong. Let us take free thinkers. They have no God. No heaven, no hell, <laughs> no rebirth, no karma, no soul, nothing. <laughs> Very highly intellectuals. <laughs> Let us take Burton Russell in England 
everybody respect him as a really highly intellectual person, but free thinker. Even Albert Einstein had no religion. But when you see what they have said, remarkable. Although they had no religious label, they had wonderful human intelligence to understand what is right, what is wrong. Do you know why we are called Manusha? What is the meaning? Is there any meaning of this word Manusha? It is in Pali, Sanskrit, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Wanga and Malay and so many languages. Same meaning, Manusha. What is the meaning? If we do not know the meaning of this word, difficult to regard you as Manusha. <laughs> it's a very meaningful word. Mana means mind. Manusa means one who can raise, develop, cultivate that mind up to the maximum level. That living being is called Manusya. Please remember. There is no another living being in this universe who can develop the mind up to that extent, like a human being. What is happening in this world today? They develop their human mind up to such extent to destroy the whole world within half an hour. Who created this? God or devil? No, human mind. Human mind can develop that cruelty, that wickedness up to such extent when they misuse that intelligence. That is why Albert Einstein said, science without religion is blind. Yes, they were blind. They developed their intelligence up to the maximum level to discover so many things in this world. But they could not understand not to use these things to destroy the world. Done by the human being. Do you know our uncle George Bush. <laughs> Yesterday in our tele radio television program, somebody asked how to settle this problem, world problem today. I think it's our uncle Bush, <laughs> George, and uncle, what is his name? Uh, if these two can practice give and take policy, then all our problems we can settle. But they are so stubborn and they are, what you call, egoism is so string, so strong, they are not ready to do that. Then we cannot settle any problems. This is the danger of the human mind if it is not cultivated properly. <coughs> Human mind is the most unreliable, unpredictable, most dangerous energy in this universe. The Buddha has said this. Nāhaṁ bhikkhave anyaṁ ekadammaṁ pi samanupassāmi yathaitaṁ bhikkhave chittaṁ Chittaṁ means mind. Chittaṁ bhikkhave lahu parivartaṁ 
by using his enlightenment, he said, I have never seen another dynamic force that works so rapidly other than human mind. Lightning strike and we have no time to look at disappear. Human mind can work thousands times faster than that. Uh, this is the nature of the human mind. If they misuse this mind, although people say God will destroy this world, before that our brain will do the job. <laughs> On the other hand, those who have cultivated, developed, purified the mind, gain the enlightenment. So one day, when the Buddha was going somewhere, he met a Brahmin. I think you know the meaning of Brahmin. Indian, Indian priests and gurus and teachers and masters, so everything, Brahmin. He has never seen such serene figure in his life. He approached the Buddha in a straight way, asked, may I know whether you are a god? The Buddha said, no, I am not a god. In that case, any other form of a supernatural living being, no, I am very natural. <laughs> All right. If you are an ordinary man, the Buddha says, no. Now confusing in his mind who this person is. Then straight away he asked, then can you tell me who you are? And Buddha gave the answer. This answer is very important for us to understand who the Buddha is. If anybody asks you, supposing you are Christian or Muslim or Hindu or free thinker, knowing you are Buddhist, come and can you tell me actually who the Buddha is? Then how I got to introduce? Hey, Buddha was born in Sakya <laughs> When he was 29 years, he ran away. He ran away from his wife. <laughs> he would know that. Recently we had inter-religious forum, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh. After my talk, Somebody asked one question. I think he is a non-Buddhist. He said, I heard that the Buddha ran away from home <laughs> even without telling his wife. <laughs> Is it not cruelty? He asked. Then I told him, do you know? Because of his running away on that day, Today, 555 million human beings run after him. <laughs> if he stayed at home <laughs> without running away, only his wife and child run after him, nobody else. <laughs> Now this introduction, self-introduction of the Buddha is very important. Please remember. Very meaningful, no argument. Anybody can appreciate. He said in his own language. What is the language spoken by the Buddha? You don't, know the, you don't know the language spoken by the Buddha. Pali, P A L I, not B A L I. 
Pali was the language spoken in northern India at that part of the country at that time. There were many other languages. So the Buddha did not use Sanskrit because that was high class Brahmin's language. The Buddha did not use. He used the language of the man in the street. Everybody used. Pali is that language. In Pali he said like this. Abhinyayam abhinyatam. I understood everything that which exists in this world. How did he do that? You know he had to cultivate 